well, I think it is two minutes past two. I think we will start. Ich fange vielleicht zunächst auf Deutsch an und sage Grüß Gott und schönen guten Tag. Ich begrüße Sie recht herzlich. Ich darf Sie zuerst auf Deutsch begrüßen, bevor wir dann auf Englisch wechseln. Wenn Sie diesem Vortrag lieber auf Deutsch folgen möchten, er wird auf Englisch gehalten werden, dann können Sie unten auf den Globus klicken und die, ähm, und die Übersetzung sich anhören. Um, now it's time for me to switch to English. And um, I would like to welcome you. Hello and welcome to this online lecture. Let's talk about radiation, science and facts for Tokyo 2020, which will be held by Professor Katsumi Shosugawa from the University of Tokyo. My name is Georg Steinhauser. I'm a professor uh, of environmental radioactivity at Leibniz University Hanover. In fact, we welcome you from all around the world. Professor Shosugawa from Tokyo, Japan, naturally. Myself from Los Alamos in the United States. And our two interpreters, um, Manuela Wille and Johannes Weber from Germany. Speaking of which, if you prefer to listen to the German translation, um, uh, you can select your language by clicking the globe at the bottom of your taskbar of the Zoom window. Please note that we will be recording um, this lecture and we will later on post it on YouTube uh, so that also people who could not participate um, will have a chance of listening to Professor Shosugawa. I hope you are all looking forward to Tokyo 2020, to the Olympic Games, with as much anticipation as we do. Um, you're all aware that the Games should have been conducted last year, but due to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, they had to be postponed to 2021. Apart from the coronavirus issue, there had been one other topic that has been brought up frequently when talking about the Olympic Games, and that is the radiological situation after the Fukushima nuclear accident. It is my enormous pleasure to welcome our speaker today, Professor Katsumi Shosugawa from the University of Tokyo. He's one of the most renowned researchers on Fukushima related topics in the world. And there was no doubt in my mind that I would like to have him as our speaker of today's lecture. Professor Shosugawa dedicated his life to studying the effects of environmental radioactivity as a result from Fukushima, not only by conducting his own excellent research, but also by keeping close contact to local authorities as well as to the public. Last but not least, he has been Japan's face to the, in, to the international scientific community, and he helped countless international researchers conducting their research in Fukushima, including myself. I met him soon after the accident, and we have been collaborating ever since. And I may add that we have developed a sincere friendship. He's currently assistant professor of radiochemistry and environmental chemistry at the University of Tokyo. He's a specialist in activation analysis, and most notably the analysis of radionuclides in the environment. He lectured the whole topic of radioactivity to more than 10,000 children, students, and parents. And I may say no one would be more qualified to inform us about the radiological situation with respect to the Olympic Games. This lecture should address the layperson, uh, but if you happen to have a question, please write it into the chat and we will target the most burning topics after the lecture. This way we can save time and summarize uh, various topics into one question and so we can be more efficient. Without further ado, I will now mute myself and hand over the floor to Professor Shosugawa for the next 45 minutes. 
So Shosugawa Sensei, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much for a great introduction for me. So today's talk theme is let's talk about radiation science and the fact for Tokyo 2020. So here is my introduction in German, but I'm sorry, I, I can't speak only English. So I am Katsumi Shozugawa, and my major is environmental chemistry, especially measurement of radiation. 10 years ago, I started radiation measurement at Fukushima. Today's moderator, Professor Gerug Steinhauser, is one of my best friends, and we have been investigating Fukushima since 2011, uh, 2012. So, today's talk is radiation and Olympic Games. I will talk about contaminated water next time. So let's enjoy my talk. First, here is some Im images about Olympic Games and Fukushima when I search them by Google. There are so many authorities, yeah. But I am not surprised when I see these images. I will understand what they want to say. Because if Olympic Games will be held at Chernobyl, we Japanese may publish images like this. So I understand the fears of Fukushima radiation. Japan has failed to disclose Fukushima information for a long time. So today, I will explain what is current Fukushima. After this lecture, I am sure that you all will be a professor of Fukushima. I am sure. Yesterday, yesterday, one of my friends who lives in EU says like this. In general, most of Europeans think that Tokyo is safe, but the Fukushima region and the food from there could be still dangerous. It is more due to the COVID situation that many Europeans think that the Olympic Games should be postponed or canceled. Hmm. I think, I also think COVID is the biggest concern about the Olympic Games. I am just a researcher, not a medical doctor. So apart from COVID-19 situation, Today, I would like to show you current radiation information of Fukushima. Current information. Oh, this is a satire after G7 summit. This is a, light, a latest satire made by a Chinese. Japan seems to be at dark and, and uh, is sharing radioactive juice mm. it's a bit fun <laughs> okay first first i'm talking about fukushima first when you hear the word fukushima you think of the nuclear accident occurred in japan yes yeah that's right but i would like to add another meaning of fukushima Fukushima is one of the most typical Japanese surname, last name. When I search researcher name, Ms. or Mr. Fukushima by using Web of Science, the website returns an error 
saying that there are too many Mr. or Ms. Fukushima. So many people. In addition, Fukushima is also traditional Japanese last name. He is a samurai called Masanori Fukushima. He was a samurai who was active about 400 years ago. I think most Japanese people probably know him. Very famous samurai. Today, 0.1% Japanese are Ms. or Mr. Fukushima. For example, a Japanese comedian's last name is also Fukushima. His name is Fukushima, uh, mm, uh, Yoshinari Fukushima. Yes. Okay. So I just want to say Fukushima is both a, a place and a name. So Fukushima is not very rare name. The last name is Abe, is 0.2% of Japanese population. Japan's former prime minister had this last name. Maybe someone remember him? And Fukushima is 0.1%. And uh, my surname is super rare and will soon become extinct. Hmm. And this is a trivia about Japanese last name. The Japanese emperor family traditionally doesn't have a last name. So I don't know why, but they have only given name. So when the emperor publishes his academic papers, he only has a given name on his paper. I can't help wondering how he submitted this paper. I don't know. Okay, this is a map of Japan superimposed on the EU. I superimposed the position of Berlin and that of Tokyo. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is located 250 kilometers northwest of Tokyo. So I had that 250 kilometers from Berlin is Koshalin in Poland. Or it takes three hours to drive from Tokyo to Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. So one day trip from Tokyo is possible. This may be a similar the distance from Berlin to Hanover. Does it take to you three hours to get from Berlin to Hanover? If we use Outbound, three hours is too enough, maybe. A massive nuclear disaster has occurred just three hours drive from a major city like Tokyo. It is no wonder people all over the world are concerned about the radiation. Yes, so this photo shows the recent Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The power plant faces the North Pacific Ocean. Here, North Pacific Ocean. There are six reactors in this plant, six. And in 12 
11, the tsunami hit the nuclear reactors and three of reactors went out of control and melted down. So this is reactor one, reactor two, reactor three are in meltdown now. The melted fuel is too dangerous to be fully investigated. The Japanese government has declared that it will, be, it will take 40 years to decommission the reactors. And around the reactors, around the reactors, there are about 1,000 tanks, water tanks, and each tank can hold 1,000 tons of water. That is currently the plant holds about 1 million tons of water. In the near future, the Japanese government are considering discharging the water from this tank into the Pacific Ocean. I know discharging water is also a big concern. We will talk more about contaminated water next time. Today is today talk is only Olympic Games. So the land around the nuclear power plant is restricted from being accessed. So anyone can enter around the Fukushima nuclear power plant. It is called evacuation zone. The area highlighted in pink, in pink on this map, is a current evacuation zone. It covers an area of 337 square kilometers. Unfortunately, the pink area has been badly contaminated. Decontamination is undergoing in progress. So please take a look at the decontamination work. Next slide. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Before seeing next slide, I would like to explain what is micro sievert per hour. Sievert is a measure of the health effect of ionizing radiation on human body. That is simply damage caused by radiation. Of course, the less damage, the better. However, there is no point at which this damage can be reduced to zero on the Earth. Because soils and cosmic rays emit radiation. So, in my laboratory, the dose rate is about 0.04 microsievert damage per hour. In now Tokyo, 0 0.04 to 0 0.06 microsievert per hour. That means not contaminated. Okay. Okay, let's see how contaminated in evacuation zone. Next slide. This is video of places that have not been contaminated. Please look at the bottom, a bottom right on the screen. 
the red arrow shows the airdose light in this car. The unit is microsievert per hour. Okay. This is the entrance of the evacuation zone. We are now at the red dot on the map in the center of the evacuation zone. Okay, let's see the video. Okay, go. Can you see those light in the car? Now, those light represents 1.7 or 8 microsieverts per hour. The fuse I go, the higher the dose light now is 2 microsieverts, 2.2, 2. 2.1. Mm -hmm. So this is the entrance of evacuation zone. Okay, next. Next video is, next video is more serious. This is in the forest. This area is not con a decontaminated area. The, we are at the red dot, uh, red dot on this map around here. So the dose rate is, was very high because of radioactive materials on the tree. Yeah. So even in a car, the dose rate was over seven microsievert. Okay, let's see this video. Eight microsievert, eight point four. So high. Eight, eight point two, eight point three, eight point four, nearly nine. Yes, I think very high contaminated. Okay. Okay, we have to decontamination. We are now under contamination work. This image shows a field being decontaminated. The surface soil is contaminated and has been removed surface soil and covered with clean soils. Then, if we see the from air point of view, the contaminated area looks like this. I think we will not be able to grow rice or vegetables here because the soil has changed completely. So farmers cannot produce as before because even decontaminated it takes much time to be good soils for cropping farmer says hmm. okay let's take a look our place where decontamination is in progress. This is uh, uh, in the bamboo, bamboo forest. I want you to pay attention to my yellow dosimeter in this video. It shows the dose rate of three microsievert three microsieverts. 
this bamboo forest has been decontaminated once. But in bamboo forest, it is difficult to remove the surface soil completely because soil is so hard. So it is still contaminated yet. However, next video shows where decontamination has been completed, finished area. The dose rate here was 0 0.06 microsievert. It is very low. So if decontamination is completed perfectly, you can find it will be very clean. This is very important thing. Can you see the dose rate? And here is 0 0.07 microsievert. There is no difference in Tokyo. So, as a result of decontamination, inside, inside the evacuation zone, yes, decontamination is insufficient. It will take a long time to complete decontamination. I think at least 10 years more. Of course, of course, reactor decommissioning needs much, much more time and the cost. On the other hand, outside the evacuation zone, outside, most of the areas have been sufficiently decontaminated. But sometimes, tiny hotspots are found. Okay. So then go back to Olympic Games story. This map shows the venues for the Olympic Games 2020. Most of the games will be held in Tokyo area most games Tokyo area, but only baseball game will be played in Fukushima. Only baseball. So let's take a closer look at the venue in Fukushima. Fukushima Baseball Stadium is located 70 kilometers away from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. 70 kilometers. It is also more than 30 kilometers away from evacuation zone. Okay. This is where the baseball game is is prayed here. So I am a measurement geek. So I do my research like this. Everywhere I want to measure. But please do not see my underwear. Please do not see my underwear. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, please see next slide. I want you to watch this video. It was February. The snow was still there, but what about the air dose rate in 
福島ベースボールスタジオム。The dose rate is about 0.04 or 0.05 microsievert. I think not so high, even in Fukushima baseball stadium. Okay, maybe some of you think that there are so many snows. Snows、uh, cut the radiation from the surface soil. So, I go to the Fukushima Studium again in March. So there's no snow season. You can see the dose rate when there is no snow season. This video is here. No snow. We can directly see the Soils. The dose rate is only 0.07 or 0.06, and so on. I think not so high. Yeah, fortunately, I think we have to find that we have to find. It will be very low contamination even in Fukushima Studium. Perhaps many of you will find this very surprising. You would think that everywhere in Fukushima is badly contaminated.、Mm. But I think it's natural to think that. But to be honest, Fukushima local government also measured radiation and published them. But the results are shown at the only board on this site. On this site. In addition, only Japanese. Only papers, only four visitors. So, no one can understand the situation of radiation. So, we went to went out to survey all the Olympic facilities. It was very tough trip. And Professor Georg Steinhauser also joined us in the survey. So we are very grateful. Thank you, Professor Georg. Okay, for example, this is a football venue. It is a place called Saitama, very near Tokyo. Okay, let's see the video. The dose rate is about 0.05 to 0.07 microsievert per hour. Oh, just only soccer balls. Okay, let's see. Next. You can see also see the exterior of the football field. Also shows it shows a dose rate of 0.07 microsievert per hour. Hmm, not so high, not contaminated. Okay, this video is a.、Uh, Past marathon course in Tokyo, although the marathon course has been changed to the very distant city of Sapporo, 
it is a good example of those lake in downtown Tokyo. So let's see the those lake in Tokyo downtown. I want you to look at the those lake here. It is between 0 0.06 and 0 0.08. Very low. I believe not contaminated. So, yes. Here is a comparison of those rate in Tokyo with those of past Olympic host cities. Sorry for small letters. After here is Helsinki, Finland, Mexico City, Mexico, Munich. Yes, Munich in Germany. And Montreal, Moscow, Seoul, Atlanta, Sydney, Beijing, and so on. On average, the dose rate for those rate for Tokyo Olympic sites is here are not very high. 0.071, not so high. Okay, let's conclude on air dose rate. Contaminations outside evacuation zone is all Olympic venues are outside the evacuation zone. Fukushima is one venues, the other is other area is 41 venues and uh, athlete village and the press center. And even the baseball stadium in Fukushima is less contaminated. And this is very important thing is anyone can be sure of this. Anyone can. Please bring in your dosimeter, pre-check and see the dose rate in Fukushima. That is not so high outside the evacuation zone. And I think you think uh, you have a concern about food or water. Yeah, yes, it's a very big concern. Yes, I will explain next slide. Oh, sorry. Before talking about uh, food and waters, I have to explain another radiation unit, Becquerel. Becquerel is a, a activity of a quantity of radioactive materials in which one nucleus decays per second. This is definition. But simply, a quantity of matter. So, of course, the less activity, the better for human health. It's very easy. The table shows regulatory limit in food or water. In case of radiocesium, radiocesiums, Japanese regulatory limit is 100 becquerels per kilograms. As for top water, 10 becquerels per kilogram is the regulatory limit. Okay, food is 100 and top water is 10 becquerels. 100 and 10. Okay, please do not forget. Okay, let's see the Fukushima contamination, uh, food contamination in Fukushima outside evacuation zone. We measure so much food stuffs so far. 
I would like to introduce the radioactivity of Fukushima foodstuffs. For example, Asimon it has a 0 0.39 Becker per kilograms. Apples, apples was 2 Becker per kilograms. Seaweed, seaweed was under 1.7 Becker per kilograms. I can detect radio cesiums in Fukushima food because I am a geek of radiation, but I think the radioactivity in Fukushima food is not so high. And two days ago, a farmer in Fukushima told me if the regulatory limit changed 100 to 25 background, 25 background, we have confidence to keep the limit because our crop has no radioactivity so much. Hmm. Okay, how about Tokyo food? The table shows food contamination in Tokyo. For example, parsimon. Parsimon is, has a 0 0.6 microsiever, a, mic, a becquerel, sorry, becquerel per kilograms. Hmm. Strass, 0 0.02. Orange, 0 0.3. Okay. Egg, 0 0.02. Mm -hmm. Mushroom, 7. Oh. A bit higher than other food. Yes, mushrooms or some uh, product in mountains tend to high radioactivity than the other foods. Okay, but there is no food over the regulatory limit. But However, however, crops in evacuation zone was battery contaminated. For example, Passimo has radioactivity seven times over the limit. Here is three times over the limit. Hmm. But crops in evacuation zone was not delivered consumers. This is very important. So we measured so much food stuff so far. This table is just examples. If you want, if you want to see more information, please contact me soon. I can show you so many huge big tables for you. Please contact me. Okay, how about water? I can detect radio cesiums in Tokyo tap waters because I'm geek. Here is a purification faculty, faculty. and I'm here, you, I'm correcting waters. I collected not only tap water, but also river water. The radioactivity is about one point, uh, sorry, 0 0.001 becquerel per kilograms. As for tap water, Japanese radioactive limit was 10 becquerel per kilograms. I think not so high the radioactivity than the limit, I think. So let's conclude about food and water contaminations. In 2020, regarding foods in shop or tap water, 
very difficult to detect radio cesiums. Of course, including other nuclei, for example, such as uh, radio strontiums or radio, radio iodine, so on. However, severe contaminations still detected in foods collected in evacuation zone. In evacuation zone. But farming in farming or cropping in evacuation zone is banned, prohibited now. So hmm, okay, what else? Okay, some of you think about the uh, hot spots. Yes, maybe you think there are hot spots in Tokyo. Yes, to be honest, that's right. Please see this video. I detected hot spots in Tokyo area. Okay. Okay, here is uh, element an elementary school in Tokyo. I'm checking the contamination level in the schoolyard, and the dose rate is 0 0.06 or 0 0.07. Okay, no contaminated. Okay, no contaminated. No contaminated. No contaminated. Oh. I found a hot spot. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. My, oh my gosh. Here is hot spot. The dose rate is became increasingly and the dose rate up to 0 0.4 microsievert per hour. This is because cleaner stuffs has been dumping schoolyard sand in the same spot for 10 years. That's why hot spots generated in the spot. But I think it is not so very strong enrichment. Even in Tokyo, sometimes you can find hot spots like this sometimes. In as far as radiation, exposure is concerned. Airplanes are the biggest factor. Maybe you are surprised the inside of plane flying at high altitude is no difference to the entrance of Fukushima evacuation zone. This is the amount I was exposed to when I traveled from Tokyo to Paris. I was exposed to 30 microsievert each way by beta rays and 60 microsievert if I include cosmic rays. So if you fly to Tokyo from any city, you will be exposed by cosmic ray. A round trip between Munich and Tokyo would expose you to 100 microsievert, about 100 microsievert. Hmm. Okay, so fright is the biggest exposure factor. This is also fact. Okay, this is an epilogue of my talk. Many Japanese will know the current situation of Fukushima. This is a TV in Fukushima. Every day in Fukushima, the contamination situation is reported on TV in the same way 
as a weather forecast. Every day, I would like to, I would like many researchers to come to Japan, like Professor Georg Steinhauser, and see what is happening. I believe that is the best way to gain trust. You? You want to come to Japan? Okay, come over here. Let us do research together with us. Okay, this is the conclusion of my talk. There is much more contamination in the Fukushima evacuation zone than you might think. Outside evacuation zone, there's less contamination than you think. Japan should have provided more and more detailed report on Fukushima nuclear disaster to all over the world. I'm sure this is the cause of all the confusion. Mm. That's all my talk. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or comments, please say, please raise your hand on the Zoom. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Katsumi. It was, uh, <laughs> it was my pleasure. And again, also, I have learned a lot of things uh, during your presentation. So you. I think you have, you have reached out to um, a great audience. And it's interesting. I've, I've just noticed that we have 132 participants. Wow. Lecture, which is really an astonishingly, astonishingly high number. And we have not lost one of them. So they all stuck with us until the very end. I, I appreciate that. I apologize for the technical glitches we had, um, but I think they were of minor disturbance. Um, I, have, uh, I have received one question from a Japanese citizen, actually from Fukushima Prefecture, who is now living abroad and who is um concerned about uh the um about the public perception abroad yeah. in europe um he said that there is uh constant demand for him to apologize for the situation in japan yeah yeah and um he's also kind of um he's in a way um, stigmatized when he when he when he talks about his uh, his his hometown and when he when he goes back home, um, mm -hmm. people people look at him, uh, which is uh, which is really sad. I believe. Is there is there anything you can you can add about uh, how we can how we can teach people abroad uh, about about the true true situation? in uh in in those places that have been decontaminated and that have been open to the public again yeah yeah so i think the decontamination work is very 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 tough work so i think the so many people want to go back to their homes as soon as possible, but decontamination is not so fast. So I think it was much time to uh, complete the decontamination to enough to live uh, live or live ordinary positions, I think. Are there any further questions in the questions and answers? Yes. Um, the citizen who, who, who uh, asked in the Q&A said that yeah, yeah, yeah. his home is in the no-go area in Okuma town. 
mm -hmm. which unfortunately uh, in the no possible return zone. See, yes, that, the... that's too bad. Unfortunately, I think it is important to to recognize that there are locations and there are spots yes. in Japan that are not open to the public and not yet open to the public and they are not safe from a radiological perspective mm -hmm. uh, but this is restricted to a rather confined area and outside in many cases if you compare uh, the dose rates that you have shown us they are comparable or even lower than what we experience in Europe in Germany in Austria um, so um, by far the biggest factor is the um, is the flight so if you are not afraid of the radiation you receive during the flight you are very very safe in Japan <laughs> thank you yeah I would like to add more one information for you, okay? Yes, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think so many people want to know the inside evacuation zone information. So, so if you want to see inside evacuation zones, I have prepared the very long video for you. So here is a QR code. And if you have a smartphone or tablet, laptop, please take the, this slide. You can find the URL on YouTube. I explain on the YouTubes and what is evacuation zone in evacuation zones. I can, I sure, this video also very interesting for you. Okay, thank you for times. Uh, we have received one question that was very interesting. Yeah. How does Fukushima compare to Chernobyl? What uh, yeah. can, you, can you comment on on the comparison between the two? Yes. Uh, yeah. To be honest, I have not been to Chernobyl, so I don't know the real situation of Chernobyl, but I can say that uh, both accident is also severe, but there are so many people living in Fukushima. This is a very big difference. Both severe is contaminated, uh, very severe, but there are so many people living in Fukushima we have to decontaminate and we have to do the de decommissioning as soon as possible because there are so many people. I think this is a big difference of the Chernobyl and Fukushima. How about your opinion, Professor Jiao? Um I, I agree. Um, the, the two accidents cannot be compared by any means. The only thing they have in common is that they have the same ranking on the so-called Ines scale. Yeah. So they have been both uh, evaluated as um, the worst possible accidents, which is probably technically true, but still uh, Chernobyl released about 10 times more of radioactivity into the environment. Yes. And above all, Chernobyl released other substances that were released from Fukushima only in trace amounts. And that is most notably uh, the actinides, the actinidin, mm -hmm. um, for example, plutonium. Yeah. And so other than in contrast to Fukushima, Chernobyl will most likely not be opened in the foreseeable future because uh, the decontamination of that area would be way more um, problematic and would cost too much. Yeah. 
I, I believe that is that is true. Yes, we, I completely agree your idea with your idea. We have received numerous very positive comments about your presentation. Thank you very much for, for yeah. those very nice comments. They have all been commending you for your style of presentation. We've also heard from uh, participants who um, had been in Japan, who had been in Sendai, north of uh, Fukushima prefecture, and who also then went to Hiroshima uh, and did not experience any problems whatsoever. Um, so um, I'm, I'm very, very pleased by this positive feedback because it is, it is my pleasure to hear that Japan is doing good because I love this country. I really <laughs> Thank do. you. Yeah. Um, we have received uh, a question about if we have comparable radiation data in, uh, in Germany. Um, sure. that, mm -hmm. that is a good question. You can, you can, I don't know if you have prepared anything about this, but in any case, you can, you can find, uh, online data immediately if you look for Dosisleistung and then for example the BFS, the Bundesamt für Strahlenschutz. There you can um, uh, there you can find um, uh, all those data and you will be surprised uh, how low radiation levels are in Japan because you will see that uh, on many instances radiation levels in Germany from natural causes will be higher than what we have observed in Japan. We also got one interesting question, and that is yeah. that definitely uh, that is definitely on you, Katsumi-chan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is, uh, where is the contaminated soil taken out? So where, yes. the, where is that soil being <laughs> stored? Yes, yes, I can show you here. We have already built a huge storage facilities in the evacuation zone near the Fukushima plant here. There are 22, no, 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 in these facilities. So huge amount of contaminated, contaminated soils staged here, very near the Fukushima plant. And the Japanese government decided temporary staged here. In 30 years, these contaminated soils take out of Fukushima and somewhere, at the somewhere, the soils decompose. I don't know where it is, but now we Japanese storage contaminated soils at temporary here. In 30 years, we decided the position site, but there's no plan. Is there any plan to, to treat the soil or? Yes, exactly, yes. Yes. Okay, so there's currently Thank no you. more. Yeah. Do people live or work in the evacuation zone? No, no, no. Only researchers, and some workers to decontaminated soils. No one can live in evacuation zone because the dose rate is extremely high to live in evacuation zone. Until the decontamination work finished, the resident cannot living there um but there are still many many people working at the power plant site do you have yes. any numbers how many people work there right now yeah about in uh, in the nuclear power plant 
about 3,000 people always working in the site. In evacuation zone, I think at least 10,000 people working to decontamination work. But they are living outside of evacuation zone. And one final question I received, uh, can you be specific on how the soil is con decontaminated? How? Okay. So by using trucks, by using uh, big machines, we remove the surface soils, surface about the five centimeters top soils removed and uh, removed and bringing the facility, a big facility, storage site, and then bringing new and clean soils and covered with a field. So this process is decontamination. So first we have to remove surface soils five centimeter topsoils. Is it okay? Yeah, I think the question was more if there is any treatment of the removed soil. Okay. Like a thermal okay. treatment. Okay. So I, we want to uh, reduce the volumes of contaminated soils, but there's no way so if we have a good idea, good process to reduce the volumes of contaminated soils, please tell me it is very uh, difficult to remove radiocesiums, radiostrontiums, radioiodines from contaminated soils. There has, very, been, yeah. there has been one question that targeted this question, is there a chance we could do something like phyto remediation, like growing plants? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, exactly. Soils to remediate the soil? Yes, yes, yes. But we have to huge, huge, huge amount of contaminated soils. And phyto remediation is a good way, but no time to uh, to do fight remediations. Okay, so there are no further questions coming in, and I think it is time now yep. to to sum up. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you have shown us impressive data that are not just rumors that yep. Japan is safe for all the visitors of Tokyo 2020, which is now Tokyo 2021, but the name yep. this day is the same. Yeah, and very confusing, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was it was very interesting to see uh, how how much effort um, the Japanese government and the Japanese people have put into making this a safe event. And I don't have any concerns about this. And I'm very very optimistic that also our um, our participants in in this lecture will be convinced that it is safe to go to Japan. So. Katsumi-chan, let me thank you again for your uh, kind presentation. And uh, thanks to our interpreters, Frau Wille and Herr Weber. And um, I would like to conclude this session and I wish you a good day or a good rest of the day wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>